Welcome to Electron Line. Here's a nice example of how to use a divergence theorem. Let's say that we have a surface, the surface of a sphere, radius 5, and a vector field defined right here, a is equal to 3x in the x direction plus 2y in the y direction. Now, trying to solve the integral on the left side may be somewhat problematic and may be difficult to do. So we'll look on the right side, since we know that the divergence term allows us to say that this is equal to this, let's go ahead and try to take the divergence of the vector field, multiply times the volume element, and then integrating over the volume to get the right answer. So what that means is we're going to now have the divergence of A, the divergence of A, and since A is written in x, y, z coordinates, we can say that this is equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of the x component of a, plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the y component of a, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to z of the z component of a. Plug in what those are. This is equal to the partial with respect to x of the x component, which is 3x plus the partial with respect to y of the y component, which is 2y, plus the partial with respect to z of the z component, and that would be 0. So that term will automatically go to 0. When we take the partial of this with respect to x, we get 3, plus when we take the partial of this with respect to y, we get 2, which means the divergence is simply the number 5. Then going ahead and doing that integral, the volume integral of the divergence of a, which is equal to 5, times dv in the Cartesian coordinate system, that would look as follows. This would look as the triple integral of 5 times dx, dy, and dz. Taking this outside integral sign, this is equal to 5 times the triple integral over dx, dy, and dz. But then we realize that this is simply the volume of the sphere. And we know that the volume of the sphere can be defined by the radius, which is equal to 5, which means that this is equal to 5 times the volume of the sphere, which is equal to 5 times 4 thirds pi r sub naught cubed. And then we know that the radius is equal to 5, which means that this is equal to 5 times 4 thirds pi times 5 cubed. That's 125 times 4, that's 500. This is equal to 5 times 500 divided by 3 times pi, or 2500 divided by 3 times pi. So that would be the integral on the right side, which means, based upon that, we could say that the integral, the surface integral of the vector field dotted with dA must be equal to 2,500 over 3 times pi. Another thing that we could have done is said, well, we could have also integrated this in the, what we call spherical coordinate system. And so instead of writing this like this, we could have said, well, we can do the integral of 5 times the volume integral would be equal to r squared times the sine of theta times d theta, dr, I should go with r first, dr, d theta, d phi. So here we have the, this here is the volume, or the small volume segment in spherical coordinates. The 5, of course, is a constant that can come out. And then if we integrate this three times, one's over d phi, one's over d theta, and then one's over dr, we can then go ahead and find out what that is equal to. The phi, of course, is the angle that goes all the way around the circle. So this is equal to, there's now a double integral remaining. We'll put the 5 in the front, r squared sine of theta d theta, multiplied times the integral of d phi, which is phi, integrated from 0 to 2 pi. And so we get a 2 pi out of that. We move that in the front. This is then equal to, and let me come all the way over here, otherwise I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to come all the way over here and continue over here. So this integral now is equal to... Could you put the dr in there? Oh, I'm missing a dr. Yes, I am. There, I need a dr times d theta. I need two differentials, otherwise I won't have enough there. All right, I have a 2 pi times 5, which is 10 pi, times the double integral of r squared sine of theta dr 
d theta. So the next we can do is integrate sine of theta d theta. That leaves us with 10 pi times integral of r squared dr times the integral of the sine of theta is the minus cosine. And theta is going to be integrated from 0 to pi. Zero, only 180 degrees. We're plugging the upper limit. We get the cosine of pi is minus 1 times the minus 1 is plus 1. Plug in the lower limit, minus a minus 1. That's again plus 1. That's equal to 2. In other words, this is equal to 2 times 10 or 20 pi times the integral of r squared dr. Finally, we can integrate this from 0 to 5. And this becomes 20 pi times r cubed over 3 from 0 to 5. Plug in the upper limit. We get 20 pi divided by 3 times 5 cubed, which is 125. And 20 times 105 is 2,500. So this becomes 2,500 pi divided by 3, which again gives us the same answer as we got over here when we assumed we knew the volume of the sphere. So again, the divergence theorem can help us a lot, especially in cases where we don't know how to integrate the left side, we can then find a different way to integrate and use the right side. Sometimes we don't know how to integrate the right side, and we can then convert it to the left side, which may sometimes be an easier integral to, to work. And so here's another example of how to use the divergence theorem to make your life a little bit easier when you can't do the left side of the integral, maybe, or the equation, maybe you should try to integrate the right side of the equation. And that's how it's done.